What is going on everybody? Welcome to the latest Cybertruck software update 2024.32.5 where the Cybertruck can finally do something for itself and that is auto park. And you know what? I will take it because although I've learned to park the Cybertruck and I'm pretty good at it now, it was difficult. It's a big vehicle and uh, it takes up a lot of space. So <laughs> if you're not used to it, it takes a little getting used to. Once you get used to it, it's like anything else, you can park it no problem. So we got Vision Auto Park. A lot of people mistaked uh, my last Cybertruck update video for the Park Assist, which is what you're seeing here on the display, where you get this nice visual to kind of help you park. This is actual Auto Park, where the Cybertruck will park itself all on its own. You just kind of select your spot if we can find one here. There are a few other things in these release notes, which we're gonna go over really quick, and then we'll get into the auto park testing and auto frunk testing. But yeah, the Cybertruck can finally park itself. We'll see the Squirkle get to move all on its own for the first time. And then we also have construction on our route, so that'll be on the maps, that's nice. We have predictive text for navigation, navigation searches, so it'll you know try to auto-complete for you and then search in this area. So if you search for something and you're like, oh wait, I wanna look, you know, you're at work, you're like, I wanna see if it's by my house. You move the map by your house, you can, you know, then search in that area, just like how Google Maps works. Uh, and that's pretty nice. So I do see some parking spots coming up here. These are handicap spots, uh, but that's all right. We're gonna dip in there and dip right out. So let's just do it. So I've tried this a few times and I found if you use the spot that the Cybertruck suggests, so you see this P right here, that's basically the spot it's suggesting that I take. It works a lot better versus if I pick another spot because you do have the option when you're doing this to look around your map and you can see up there, hopefully, that you can pick. We have two or three different spots that we can pick from and I can pick any of those spots that I want the Cybertruck to you know, auto park for me. I'm just gonna picture here because I know I don't have screen record on the Cybertruck yet. Hopefully it's coming soon. But if I click this spot, then I can click start. And the Cybertruck does a great job of showing me my cameras. So the front bumper camera is so nice in this mode. It's gonna give you that confidence that the Cybertruck is staying far away from the... <laughs> um, and we got some autopilot action going here. So you can see that it is just cruising along. And as it's doing this, you know, something I want to talk about is a lot of people say, oh, it's slow, it takes forever. Now, this is not the best example. It is going a little slow. It is staying away from those cars. What I will do is I'm using auto park is I will unbuckle my seatbelt. So you can see here, I take my seatbelt off. I'll gather my things. I'll kind of get ready to go. And then when the auto park is complete, I'm ready to get out. And I've, I've net saved some time. So I do use auto park in that way. And it will save me time if Cybertruck, you know, does a good job and nails it on the first time every time, which it's been, I will say, hit or miss for me. We do have some that are really good. We have some that are not as good. So you can see we're a little close to that sideline there. Although with these striped lines in the middle, I actually would prefer. So I think this is a great job parking. And if you look at the back there, the bumper is, could not be more perfectly lined up with that curb. Personally, this is just personal preference. I would go over the curb a little bit uh, because, you know, trucks are big and they're long and we're sticking out just a little bit here. Uh, as you can see in this picture, that our nose is well past the vehicle that's next to us. So that's something uh, that you'll notice. But very cool to see the Squirkle move by itself. And you can see the little blue icon in the top right, the first time we've gotten to see that in the Cybertruck, which we'll see for FSD and Autopilot as well. Two other things I want to mention before we move on. Number one, we do have hands-free frunk, which I'll show kind of near the end of the video. But you can walk up. It'll detect your iPhone for now if you have an iPhone 11 or newer. And it'll automatically open for you. You just got to stand there. It'll beep a couple times, and then it'll open. You can turn that on or off if you want to use it. You don't have to have it on. And you can exclude home so that, you know, if you're standing by your truck in the garage or something, it won't automatically open for you when you don't want it. The other thing I want to point out is a while ago, it got these little blue dots to kind of show you when there's something new in the menu and autopilot got this blue dot. But when I go in here, I can't find anything new. If you look under locks, you can see my hands free frunk says new right next to it. And that, you know, had a blue dot until I saw it. And then the blue dot went away. Well, under autopilot, there's a blue dot, but I can't do anything. So there's no, there's nothing new. So I'm like, did they bury autopilot in here somewhere? Is this some kind of, you know, is this some kind of like Easter egg I'm trying to find? I don't know exactly what's going on, but that's something I wanted to point out. I hope you enjoy the testing in this video. All right, so you just hop in the Cybertruck, you tap the brake and you're automatically in drive. You can see here, we're gonna go forward. Now, what I will say is nice about this, when we got these parking visuals, I was uh, not complaining, but mentioning that they only worked up to about four miles an hour. Let me see here really quick. So we'll get to four here and five. And yeah, so those parking visuals are gone, but the auto park does work up to eight 
miles an hour, which is the same as on the Model Y. So I've selected this spot for us to auto park in and we're gonna let the Cybertruck do it for us. Man, it's pull, pulling up a lot here. So something interesting about this, Elon Musk has mentioned that he they should turn off the steering wheel. So this is the first car with full steer-by-wire where this uh, wheel is not connected physically to the tires. It's all uh, electronics and, and over ethernet and all this stuff. So this doesn't need to move as the wheels are turning. Now in something like Auto Park, I mean, I, I kind of see it. Wow, I like that little adjust at the end, just a little bit forward. Um, in Auto Park, I can kind of see it because it's not like intervening besides hitting the brake is going to be that critical. But if you are uh, in a situation where you needed to take over steering, it'd probably help if the steering wheel was in the appropriate spot. We're up just a little bit too far, and if I look at the cars to my right and my left, I can tell obviously that we are way sticking out uh, compared to those, so a little bit more backup would have been nice. Now, one of the really good pieces of news here is that it seems Ashok, who's heading the autopilot team, has a really good feel for when these updates are gonna come. He has talked about a couple of updates now and he's been right on the money. He said this was gonna come this weekend. He kind of indirectly said it. And they had a few hours left, but it did, it did happen. Uh, so we can select whatever spot we want here. So if I expand this and you look at this map, pretty much any of these rectangles are open parking spots that we can select for the Cybertruck to go into. Now, one thing I've noticed is, I've, I've tried this out a little bit before the video, if I let the Cybertruck select its own spot, so let me drive here and you'll see it'll pop up with basically a suggestion. Give it a second here because I selected one. So right there, that's its suggested parking spot. If I use the suggested one, it seems to do a better job of parking versus if I pick my own. So let me pick this one way back here. It's pretty far away. Let me bring up the cameras for you there and we'll just click start. This thing is gonna have to back up a pretty good amount to get into that spot. Oh, it's actually closer than I thought. It was a little deceiving on the screen. But I found that if I select a spot that's farther away, it's not the suggested one, uh, the Cybertruck tends to not do as good of a job getting into the spot. So we'll see how it contends with this uh, sign here. And no, we look really centered. So I was seeing in my testing earlier, whoa, you're about to touch it. I'll let it happen for the video. Oh, it didn't, it didn't touch it. I gotta get a picture of that, it's gotta be close. Um, but we're still sticking out just a little bit. Um, I was finding it was really off to one side of the parking spot when I was selecting it and not using the suggested spot. I would say we're just about as far back as we could be in this spot. So this is a much better spot um, or a much better job on this one. Let me go take a picture of that. All right, y'all, we came to downtown to do this right. So here's the first one I found. <laughs> uh, it's only gonna park next to one car and hopefully we don't pull up too much, but yeah, I'm, whatever. We could be awkward here, I'll let it happen. Nobody's behind me for now, which you can't see because we're looking at the front camera. And this thing is going into a parallel parking spot. It is tapping the brake there and really swung out. That guy's looking at me. He didn't like that, but he stopped at a red light so he could have just not pulled up that far. I don't know, that was weird. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking at because he literally has just stopped next to me now. He can't go anywhere. So Cybertruck is trying to get in there. You can see that back tire getting close to the curb. And now some cars are starting to pull up they should be able to go around us here. And I think this is probably pretty normal, you know, uh, situation. Actually, I don't know if this is actually a parking spot, but the server truck brought it up, so I went for it. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll stop right there. And I don't think this is actually a parallel parking spot, but it did it, I picked it. You know what, I'll take it. That wasn't, that really wasn't awful. And look at that, we got bubbles for celebration. Oh, this is so nerve wracking. All right, let's get out of here. I'm already in drive. <laughs> I'll find another spot for us. And yeah, I don't know what's going on up there. I think everybody's okay. This is definitely a parallel parking spot. We're just trolling here. And there you go, it did bring it up. So we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna click that. And my goal is to tell you about today's sponsor. Delete me before it finishes parking this parallel parking spot. So if you don't know, data brokers are online entities that are stealing your information. They're collecting it and they're selling it. They sell your information, your phone number, your full name, your address. <laughs> And we got, we got an audience for this one. <laughs> and uh, they sell that to bad guys. And that could lead to identity theft, phishing, or other scams. But you can use Delete Me. They will scour the internet for you. And they will delete your personal information from these data brokers and get your information safe. Dear Lord, is this nerve wracking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been using Delete Me for a year. They have taken my information off. <laughs> off of lots of websites. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Screw this, I can't do it. Okay, it's too close, it's too close. It's gonna be scared. <laughs> it's gonna be on the curb. 
Oh dear. And I'm in a cyber truck. It's just the worst. It's it's literally the worst thing I've ever experienced. I hope you all appreciate what I'm doing here for you because this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find another parking spot. Oh, I'm laughing so hard. Holy crap. It wasn't me. It was the car parking, right? It wasn't me. Oh, my goodness. All right, here's our, our next chance here. We are parallel parking in this spot. Oh, did a person just walk behind us? They sure did. And it stopped my auto park ability. So, um, save 20% on delete me by using my link below <laughs> and the code uh, Dirty Tesla. YT, I can't remember the code right now. I'm stressing about this. This is so embarrassing. Dude, FSD and Cybertruck is going to be something else. Um, so yeah, we're here doing Auto Park. Uh, thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this, this very embarrassing video. Uh, but their product is not embarrassing. Definitely check them out. They have, seriously, they've deleted my information from so much of the internet, it's amazing. Uh, so yeah, thank you to, for, to Delete Me for sponsoring uh, this portion of the video, this parallel park, this successful one. Um, and you can see the little yoke up there. Dang, I'll have to get a close-up of that for you. Look at that front bumper cam. Oh, and a little backup, and that should be good right there. Okay, that's good. That's it. All right, we did it. You know what? That parallel park was great. That one, it, it handled really well. Let's check out our cameras here. I'll hop out and get some pictures. But no, that looks awesome. Look how close to the curb we are over there. Um, and we're a good distance from the car in front of us, but there's space behind us as well for someone else to park. So that one, that one was good. I'm still <laughs> cringing from the first one though. All right, I've been driving around for a long time trying to find a spot between two cars to test this out with. And I finally found one here. You can see in the bottom right there, there's a little space. I'm not sure it's big enough. That's the, one of the problems with this is a lot of the spaces just simply aren't big enough. And um, it's not allowing me to select it. So I don't know if it can detect that that space isn't big enough or what the reason is, but yeah, I'm not able to, um, do auto park in that spot. So I'll keep looking, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get it. All right, so we got another big spot right here. Here we go. So we're gonna do this auto park. And of course somebody comes up <laughs> immediately as I start doing this. I think they should have room to get around. Yep, there they go. So they'll go, oh my gosh, multiple cars are coming up behind me. I haven't had anyone behind me like this entire time as I'm searching, but whatever, here we go. This is what you deal with, you know, people parallel park on these streets. So this one is, is doing really well so far, a lot better than what we saw out of that other one that I'm just finishing my cringing from. It's actually doing really, really well right now. So you can see it has the lines there. It has, you know, in orange where like it doesn't want to touch. It needs to adjust just a little bit. Love the front camera. It gives so much more confidence in terms of, you know, letting the, the Cybertruck do its thing. And remember, this is the first iteration. So this will change over time and get better. So not the best job. So if you look at the cameras again, I, I wish I would leave those up. We're decently close to the curb, but we're just ever so slightly, I think in the bike lane. Let me look really quick. Yeah, so the left side of the car is in the bike lane, the left side of the truck. So if I was to do, fix this, I would go like this. You got plenty of room that way. And then just kind of pull up like that. And I'd have to basically do that one more time to get us out of the bike lane. And then the final thing I want to show you is the auto frunk. So you will, as of now, need an iPhone 11 or newer. Hopefully this will come to Android soon. Luckily I do have an iPhone. It's kind of a business line and part of why I got it is because of missing out on features like this and then I couldn't cover them. But all you have to do is you walk up, you'll hear three beeps. So I'm going to be quiet because they're pretty quiet in real life and they're hard to pick up on video. And then the frunk will open. So let's check it out. So hopefully you heard those three beeps and then it opens up. It basically is just confirming that you're standing in front of the Cybertruck. You actually want the front to open. Your hands could be full. You could then, you know, put some stuff into the front and then you can close it uh, with the button. It does not automatically close when you walk away. So if I take a few steps back here, this is where I started the video basically. It's not going to auto close. You could walk away, leave it open if, you know, you're unloading and your hands are full. And then you could uh, go ahead and close it from the app wherever you you know get to your destination. If you forget, you'll get a notification that it's open 
and you can do it that way. But as of now, it does not auto close. It would be nice though, because it does know when you walk away and I'll show you how I know that. It would be nice for them to add a toggle for uh, auto close when you walk away. So I'm gonna walk up to the Cybertruck. I'm gonna listen for those beeps and then I'm gonna back away and we'll see that the Cybertruck or the <laughs> Cyberfrunk or whatever will not open. So here we go. So I got three beeps on that one. I've also had it do two and then it doesn't open because I walked away after hearing those beeps. Again, you can walk up when I stop. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. So it takes about four to five seconds for this to open. I posted this on X and I couldn't believe how many comments were like, oh, that's way too long. But if it was any shorter, simply walking by the Cybertruck would cause this to open when you don't want it to open. In real life, the timing feels great. You walk up with your stuff, you just stand here, you do absolutely nothing, and it opens for you. A welcome addition. You can also toggle this completely off if you want. So if you don't want it ever activating, you can do that. It's actually off by default. And there is a checkbox so you can make it so this does not function when you're home. So that if you're like working around it in your garage or something, it won't keep opening for you.